time, extra lit, extra lit, extra lit. It's the man with the plan. I ain't Clark Kent, but some of the ladies do call me Superman. It's your boy, Big Callie. We feeling good, feeling great as usual. Coming at you with another one. Damn. Special podcast, man. Honestly, this is a great... This is something I've been thinking about for a while. I'm so excited about because this is probably the one of the most organic guests I've ever had in my life. Where it just literally... The universe put us <laughs> together. It was Nobody's lit- ever called me organic before. Right? <laughs> yes. It was literally like, it, it was, it happened by like just fate. This is a good man. Great story. We, we know him. Okay. Like the resume goes stupid. Like we, if we just start at the top, fucking turn on Disney plus and just go to the back and see every movie that literally has probably the most rates on there. You'll see this man in <laughs> heavyweights, D2, D1, D3, all he is the franchise in there. He was the funniest man in there. He is what is that, that is, man. Not I'm not even going to go into it. I'm fanning out. I'm just going to get this out now. In the beginning, the first five for all the people. It's my man, Sean Wise in the building, man. What's up? How you doing, man? I'm doing excellent. I'm very happy to be with you. Thank today. you, brother. I appreciate you coming. And sorry I didn't, um, <laughs> I didn't introduce your guests also with you. But you were speaking so highly of her. I want you to actually... Even introduce her, tell because you, oh, wow. your intro, you told me, I, you you do way better just well, than yeah, I would. Well, yeah, I would probably do a, a better job than you just because I know her so well. <laughs> um, you know, this lady, like, um, well, it's not so much an intro as much as I was just telling you a little bit about her. Right. And telling you how much I love this woman. Uh, this is Natanya Ross. <laughs> you may know <laughs> her yeah. from, uh, right. you know. From uh, 90s uh, pop culture shows and uh, things like that. I know her from uh, just when we were kids and we were we used to hang out when we were 15 or 16. Were you guys working in the industry together? Well, time? we never really worked together, but, but we used to like, hang vibe. out in the yeah, same yeah. clicks and Makes stuff sense. like that. Uh, basically, at the Oakwood apartment. <laughs> shout, <laughs> shout, out shout, Oakwood. Out Oakwood. shout out to Oakwood. Shout out to Oakwood. <laughs> and, uh, and so, but years later, we hadn't seen each other, spoke to each other for years mm-hmm. um, until some stuff happened years later. And yeah. Natanya was able to, like, step in and really, uh, she was the one to, like, throw me the life raft, you know? Right. Because, like, if you were drowning... In the ocean, you need right. somebody to throw you that rap. Yeah, you know? of course. And so that was her um, in a lot of ways. What a blessing, and, man. Yeah, yeah. What a blessing, man. And I mean, you know, it it was... Uh, to just r- explain it in, a, in a, a, a brief kind of way, right when I got into trouble, she was sending me messages like, Listen, I got you. I'm um just on a free whim, like I'm together with you on this. I love you. Wow. And I was like, who is this woman like <laughs> telling me? And she kept like being there and sending me like, you know, being there with love and support at a time where I hadn't didn't have anyone. Wow. And um sooner or later I was like, oh my God, like this woman means that shit. Right. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. Nah, for Kind real. of a weird introduction. <laughs> no, no, it's not but, weird because, honestly, you need those moments. You need those, even Oprah calls it the aha moments or the those those light bulb moments or that, you know, that breaking point. And sure. the person that's there and is actually there for not, like, even her agenda or no one's, it's literally just you. Like, they just want you to be... You said it. Right. That's right. That's rare. And as someone that's been through my own recovery process and been through my... I I have a bunch of people that I could, you know, draw from, but then even fewer, I have the ones that literally was there at the point where I don't even want no one to have seen me right. or even be yeah. there. Mm-hmm. No one yeah. talks about that, you know? But we're going to get into that because when I met you, you are talking about you're going on... You're about to go on the road... <laughs> You're doing, you were flying to, I was doing Lyft. I'll just say, I was doing Lyft, <laughs> randomly picked them up, <laughs> and we were just talking, and then we are listening to the Kendrick album. Yeah. We are listening to the new Kendrick album, and he was what? like, yo, who is this? This is this that new Kendrick album? He was like, yeah, turn this shit up. I want to hear this. I was like, all right, well, I'll fuck I with was up. so happy, because I'll tell you what happened. I got, uh, you picked me up at 11 o'clock. Yeah. Then, but what happened was I was at the at LAX the night before for a midnight flight. Oh, yeah. And I got I to the airport me, yeah. and my ticket wasn't booked. So oh, right. You, yes. you know, that's like some drama yeah. I have to go through. <laughs> you get all ready to go to the airport and 
and your flight doesn't happen. I had to yeah. Uber or Lyft. Sorry, I don't want to say Uber. And it's okay, it's okay. I had to Lyft back home and go through all that shit. Uber is now a verb, okay? Like it's not right. even so much a noun. It's yeah. now a verb. Like I say what it I mean. Describes like, it, so I get you. Yeah. Okay, good. You're good. You're good. So the next day, Lyft I was like. Me. <laughs> okay. Or, all right. So the next day, I was like, I, I kind of in the, I'm in the modality of thinking that like everything happens for a reason, kind of thing. So I ordered the lift, and uh, I was up all night because I had to like schedule my own flight out the next day. And these people were trying to like not pay me, and I was like trying to save my money. You know what I mean? Right. So I was up all night, and it was just a long day. And my my lift was coming. Said five minutes, it'll be there. And I was like, God, like. Cut me a cut me some slack today, like cut me a break. Right. And homeboy pulled up. That was you. You were the break. He was my break. <laughs> Just literally. <laughs> and like he wasn't like like too talkative at first or nothing. He's like, "How you doing?" I'm like, "I'm good." And he just put on Kendrick, and it was like some smooth jazz. Yeah. And were, that album is crazy. Cool. And then shout uh, out Kendrick, by the way. Shout dude. out TDE. Album stupid, crazy. Yeah, yeah. And that's what literally brought it. You were like, "I want to hear that." And I was like, "Okay, you listen to music." Then we just got into a hip hop debate. Yeah. Literally from hip hop debating, talking deep into music, then. I don't know how it morphed into me talking about partying or shit I've done. And I was like, man, I'm so square now. I don't even do anything. And then you're just like, or some way we talked about I, recovery or some something way. Happened in, he was something happened. That's why I can't remember. I can't remember whatever jolted. It just happened. It was me because something happened in his album. And he was talking about drugs or drug addiction. And I said something about drug addiction. And you turned around and looked at me while you were still driving. And you were like, <laughs> <laughs> and, the, and it was me talking about addiction and yeah. then my face. And you put it together that like I might be, you know, and you were yeah. like, yeah. And then that's when you were like. Yeah, because you had you had the mask on at first and then you took it off and then you were just talking. And then I was like, hey, I know who you are, bro. What's right. good, bro? How are you, G? That's what happened. I was like, you're fucking dope, bro. I know who the fuck you are. Yeah, you I said love that. Like that. Yeah, it was just like that. I was like, I know who the fuck you are. I, I mean, you're cool. I'm still going to listen to this album, but you're tight as shit, though. I fuck with you, I was bro. Like, I was like, fuck the airport. We're going to hang out, bro. Uh, yeah, we were yeah. just talking the whole time. That's amazing. And, and I literally was just like, come, come through one of these days, man, because literally, he just broke down his story to me, and it's so inspiring, bro. Yeah. Like, I'm not just saying that, bro. We seen it. As a kid, we watched you be a child actor. I hate that word, but, you know, for sake of I argument. don't mind that term. Because you're an actor. Yeah, like, and I was a child. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were a child, so yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, But Checks out. you were literally that person. You did that, and we watched it. But then we seen literally how bad they publicized your breaking point. Well, they're, they're pretty accurate on most of that shit, huh. you know? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you know, it you know, wasn't that, worse than they said it was. I, I was, got you. I got you. And, that, you know, we we don't have to touch about it or any. I kind of want to talk just freely about it because just in your whole career, like, starting with the top, like, I want to know, like, were you always acting, like, as a kid, kid? Like, as a kid, like, when did you start? Were you in plays? Like, Yeah, I started, I, I had four older brothers and sisters. And uh, they would, like... Uh, get me to like go up to adults and cuss at them and like <laughs> give adults the middle finger, you know what I mean? And so I would just do that stuff. And I guess people thought that was amusing and they would tell my mom, oh, you should put your kid on television. <laughs> I'm walking into auditions like flipping people. <laughs> Come on, no, but so my mom uh, uh, took me to a talent scout when I was about six. And mm. the talent scout was like, yeah, let's, uh, she scouted my talent. And yeah. uh, <laughs> not too long after that, I was doing some commercials and I got to do a Bill Cosby commercial, which was like my first Damn. Thing. Yeah, which And this was awesome. is like in the late eight, the, the late 80s. So yeah. this is like when he was like. This was like he was The prime. guy, like yeah. with no controversy, no nothing. He's literally the prime guy. Right. Especially on television or anything, media, period. Yeah, and I'm. I'll that's say, crazy as a first gig out the gate. <laughs> That's, I know. That's very tight. You're and I think I knew, I had, I had a sense of who he was, too, because he was so famous that, like, you know. He, was that he, the most fame you've ever, at that moment, like, you were seeing as a Up till like, then, yeah. yeah, for sure. I mean, and probably still, actually. I got to work with him years later on a show called Here and Now that Malcolm Jamal Warner did. Okay. And Cosby produced it. And so I got to work with him for, like, six months. Damn. Yeah, that was sick. Where he was like, actually, you know, and you got to have like one on and see him like that and work yeah. out, man. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. He was a he still is. I don't know why I say was like he passed away. He's an, was is an amazing man, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's the kind of guy before he got in the room, 
you know he's in the room. I've yeah. heard so many crazy, like people talked about Cosby, like, cause first off, as even a black man in the 70s, 60s, like he was doing things we never saw. Sure. So uh, yes, but controversy two year now. I mean, this time, I mean, I don't know. Bro, I'll tell you one thing. My mom was jocking Cosby hardcore. <laughs> she was a married woman, bro. And if my mom could have gotten a piece of Cosby, she'd have done it. Like <laughs> he never, he never let her. Uh, he never let them get in the same room like alone. I got you. No, that makes sense. And I was, but I was aware of that shit. So I mean, as far as all the other stuff, it, I it, it's not even in my. I can't even fathom because I saw like women throwing themselves at him. My mother being one of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's real. God rest her soul. Hey, man. For real, for real. So how'd you lead to start doing feature films and stuff like that? I just did like it. It went from commercials to uh, TV roles. I did Pee Wee's Playhouse. What? Yeah, I was one of the little uh, Yo. little uh, kids on Pee Wee's Playhouse. I just got on Saturday Night Live this last weekend or the last episode. Because Natasha Leone was the host. Yeah. And in her monologue, she played a clip of Pee Wee's Playhouse. Oh, I don't even know that. Yeah. Wow. And I'm in the clip, so I have a line on Saturday Night Live. Talk your Finally. shit. Let's go. Finally. 44 years. Let's go. I You're have to get an <laughs> IMDb credit for that. Hey, you might on the low. <laughs> Will I get an IMDb? We you need might. to find out. We need to. Ask. I need to call Keen and be like, "Yo, talk to Lauren Michaels, <laughs> whoever over there. See what's up. Get me my little credit. <laughs> Something. You know? Man. No. Hey. It counts. It counts. It I looked up your IMDb and it was crazy, bro. I downloaded the app today just because I was like, I want to know. Did you what get pro? It? Did you get IMDb But I pro? gave my phone away because I was like, I'm not going to like be the person to just like reading like, oh, so you did this <laughs> and you did this. Like, no, I don't want to do it. Like, I literally, I know your <laughs> shit. Like, I don't have to fake like I didn't. And what was like, so of course, I want to, you know, talk about this in the beginning. Like, as a big dude, me personally, as a kid that grew up fat, I needed an identity of like what to do. Now, that role, all your roles in the beginning, you're always the cool, like bigger kid, the cool fat kid. You were. Even in heavyweights, you embraced it all the way, but you were like the coolest one. Yeah. That people are still quoting your lines. I've seen it on Instagram today. You had like literally a whole reenactment of the things on TikTok. Yeah. Going up still. That's that sports oh. video. <laughs> Till the day. Um, <laughs> I just, I'm, I hope that like, Heavyweights isn't responsible for like a lot of type two diabetes. Makes sense. That's my hope. I never thought because about of what that you're that saying. Sense. Like I feel like kids. It's a were good, like, but hear me out though. I seen it, and it was like you didn't like say, "Oh, this is just like, bro, if this is your situation." Sure. Who else are you gonna look at? Right. Let's yeah. just go down the list of every other family. It was like always oh, a joke. You were the butt of the joke. You weren't the person making the joke. Yeah, no, and mm. I think that's You definitely, feel me? Yeah, no. So having that whole aspect of it is like, yeah. man, I don't know, did, were you always living that way? Were you always that kind of person? Like, where did that confidence come from? Um, I don't know. I never really, I never really felt like the fat guy. You know what I mean? I never really, uh, I never really could relate to that. Is he getting some Doritos out of there? What the hell's going on? <laughs> nah, my man, we got oh, the DoorDash order. My man ordering. hooked it up with a Coke Zero. Do you want do you Dude, want some, do you want some chips or something? Uh, well, that Coke Zero. I mean, I'll tell you what. These oh, it's not a zero. That is. Uh, no, no ice is fine. That's fine. Cause I'll tell you what's going on. I got you, bro. I got these. Thank uh, you, bro. I got these hundred thousand dollar teeth in my mouth, but they tend to dry my mouth up. Mm. So I have to always be sucking on something and. You know, <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> That's how I know you're getting ready to go on this tour, man. Your your bits are already on I'm point, trying to, bro. I'm trying to. I be love funny. it, no, because you're in the car. You have me cracking up because you're just we're talking about the Will Smith and Chris Rock stuff. Yeah, that's and you're right in it because it was like fresh when it happened. Yeah. and we were talking about it. So, man, like my point. Can I say what my point go ahead. was? Go ahead. I was saying that I think that Chris Rock is the real winner in the situation. Of course, because talk your shit. I want to hear your perspective. when he's 80 years old. He'll still be making money off this this incident. When he's eighty years old, Too sure. he'll be on TV. Oh, yeah. He'll be on TV selling drugs to senior citizens, talking about don't let arthritis slap the <laughs> shit out of you. Come on, bro. Don't let if I had a good uh, Chris Rock impression, <laughs> that'd be a good joke, right? right? You gotta write that one down, bro. That's a, that's a, that's Why? a big Cali exclusive. That's a big Cali world exclusive. I can do that for, for you. Just we'll put it in the comments just so I remember. Why is everyone? <laughs> so there are other people in the room. Yes. But I noticed they're quiet. Yeah. But they're like 
You know, they're kind of like reacting to the show, but in yeah. a kind of a pantomiming kind of way, and it's yeah. kind of odd. Well, because it's production. So oh, everyone that's here is running the cameras right. or doing the audio or shadowing. I get Because that's Brie. That's, that's, I do Here's a podcast. The, hey. where we just did a podcast before you, you came. I get you. So we did all audio. So everyone's here kind of working. So really, it's more so observing and enjoying. They know that I'm easily distracted. So oh, I get they it. know what a sudden so laugh. It's big Cali yeah. yeah. back and yeah, being yeah, yeah, like, yeah. yo. So that's the beautiful thing. That's the beautiful thing about productive culture, sure. which is why we're such a great production team okay. here. They can customize any recording request that you literally need sure. to the point of no breaks, no, no, no like doors slamming, all that, because I'm always looking. Which goes into like oh. the only child syndrome of me. I'm always nosy. I'm always <laughs> wanting to look. I'm always trying to see what's good, which then can go to anxiety, which then goes into what do you yeah, do to Yeah, once your anxiety. head starts spinning out of control, you're, it's yeah, you're done. It goes crazy. What? Um, and I noticed you have four cameras? Yes. Oh, so that's cool because you can cut between things. Oh, you're going to, when you see oh. this all the way cut up and done, it's going to look, look it's going to go boom, right. boom, 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 boom. A lot of people, laymen, people that aren't professionals like us, they don't understand that editing a lot of times is just so you can cut away from shit. Yeah. That you don't want to see. So you have to be able to like cut to something. You know what I mean? Of course. So. Like for instance, he probably would have cut that whole Coca-Cola thing would have been shut out. Like, you're going to not even see. He's probably going to be looking at me looking at the camera like what's going on. Be I'm like, why is he got a, how do you but end then up I that, that But then I'm wondering like why you want a warm Coca-Cola? Like that's hardcore, bro. I'm just trying to get, if you pay close attention as I'm talking, my lips are doing these. Can you yeah. Do that? I can't fucking deal with that. <laughs> oh, it's because of your teeth? Yeah. Oh. I gotta get some, um, no, but thank you. Can you even chew gum? Yeah, I can oh, chew you gum. Can, yeah. That was a great They're question. They're new teeth. Thank you. No, yeah, we, still, I seen... Still learning still about used to them. First <laughs> off, we seen the whole... T the t I saw the TMZ thing that the dentist guy gave you the new teeth for the 120 or something like that. How true is that? What? Because... Wait, what about that 120? I read somewhere in TMZ, I believe, it said that you got a whole new set of teeth and oh. all he charged you was $120. It was like $100,000 oh. teeth. Just yeah. because the whole transformation of your recovery inspired him and he got so happy to do it. Yeah, man. But this is a Team Z report. No, this is not a Big Cali World report. Well, so I'm just reading it here, on Big Cali. Here's the exclusive, probably like the dopest dentist on the planet yeah. that does this kind of stuff. Uh, if like is a friend of a friend of mine, Michael yeah. Bauer. Shout out Michael Bauer. Michael Bauer. That's what kids do, right? Now you go shout out shout everything. Out, shout out, shout out Michael old Bauer. Now. We don't know. Shout out on a shout out. You guys are old. You guys are talking like you're old. I feel old as fuck. The I fact mean, that we gotta ask about, about a shout out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but you're we're not young. <laughs> you're nice though. You know that stuff. I don't. You're, she knows. I'm a little more out. up on she, like. Yeah, that she, kind of stuff for sure. Yeah. Oh, I'll, we're going to tap into like, because, so sorry, this doctor put, yeah. This doctor put a lot of love in my face for free. And I mean, he went the whole nine yards. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he yeah. gave me like the Ted Bundy mold. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean, the, the most you could do, he didn't yeah. cut any corners. And uh, when I got man, these things sorry. put in, dude, it changed my life instantly. Yeah. It felt like... Uh, you know, in the movies, when like an old guy gets put in a, a new, a young body, a new body. Yeah, that's yeah. how I felt. Wow. Real. It was like an entirely different disposition. Absolutely. Instantly. Yeah. Yeah. Because well, I really couldn't, I couldn't enjoy even just the joy of a conversation with somebody. Because yeah. I was like, mm. yeah. Because you know? you're like, they're looking at you. Yeah. Like, uh, I feel like it was, it was, you know, it was bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that was. Damn. From going through, and you were friends with me the whole time. She would have, she would, you went to, you would go out to dinner with me yeah. and shit. I don't care. I don't know how you did that. I mean, you gotta see in what, real life. You gotta see that's, past that. That shows how it real it was though, because yeah, I mean, I feel you. Like yeah. most people, are like okay, so yeah, you can come by the house. That's what I'm saying. You can come to the crib and I'm indoors and chill. We and can talk Cali, I'd be at dinner and I'd be like, yo, I'm getting the teeth put in in July, like just to keep her <laughs> letting her know. Like you gotta that, make like, an announcement. Well, just to let her know just that so you, like, know. you don't care. have to do this forever. You know, yeah, like, yeah. one I day. Don't care. Yeah, teeth, so no sweet. teeth. <laughs> That's love. That's so tight, man. So. I want to talk about um, kind of what we were talking about in the car. You know, I want to get into it because, you know, we we kind of touched on the movies a little bit. I mean, of course, I'm sure you could say those was just great times, you know, good, good experiences. I'm sure, you know, you're kind of touching on in the car. You're telling me, you know, was, the highs of it was great. You know, being being that star, being that and were at that time where you 
using any kind of drugs at that time in that time of your life or when did that start becoming a play no i never saw i never even saw hard drugs till i was probably 36 or 37 which is when i started using them what so yeah no all through the like disney plus years if you will (laughs) yeah yeah no i was not i mean i used to uh mess around with pot and we used to get high yeah once in a while i don't i mean that was pretty young, Mighty Duck. So, yeah, no, I wasn't really doing much of anything at that, at that got point. Got you, and got you. And then clearly, right after that, were 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 you doing more writing at that time, or were you doing were you doing more in the industry like that? Because yeah, I mean, I did after like the Ducks, and I got into my like young early twenties. Um, I did a couple of sitcoms that didn't work out, like that got canceled way too early. Right. Like I did the Tony Danza show, and we all thought we were going to do a hundred episodes. Wait, the Tony Danza show didn't get it was, picked up? Right, yeah, it made no sense. And, and this is in the 90s? Yeah, well, no, it was just like, yeah, it was 98. Yeah, no, I was, that's a... Bro, I went out and ball. bought, I went out and bought an Infinity, whole new wardrobe. I mean, I was like spending cash before I got the Because you shot the pilot, you just got the pilot. We shot 13 of them, and I think they what? canceled, yeah, they canceled before, um... Anyway, we See, all See, the we industry was, is fucking crazy, bro. Like, in music that... I guess, I don't know, is that like getting signed, Jordan? Would you say like getting signed and then like literally you don't ever drop the album? Like you can, you record, you get the budget, but for some reason you only get that single deal and that's it. The episodes that were coming out, 14 million people were watching, which is like insane nowadays. Yeah. So. Only people getting those kind of views is like streaming services. Yeah, like maybe, I, I, but like I don't, I don't think t- television's pulling those kind of numbers anymore. Not I, in the twenty twenty two. I'm not even like keeping track. But yeah, it's like to get to do those numbers and get canceled. Anyway, so uh, I did a couple. I had a couple of those kind of things, mm-hmm. and then I did a bunch of uh, guest spots on like shows like Boy Meets World and King of Queens. And, got you. And then I yeah I got more into I got into production as um, uh, more of a means of, of survival. Mm. I would just like uh, more of like a hustle. I would like develop a show and then uh, find financers and then yeah. shoot it and then try to sell it. Basically, it was my hustle. The whole for years. grind. Yeah, exactly. But then you you still had like the the I guess the black book of people just from all the stuff you've done. Yeah, and then you're able to go. So I can understand. That. I was like, okay, maybe this ain't working. So I'm just gonna produce exactly. my own stuff and do that. Yeah, exactly. that makes total. Actually, I'm like thinking like, yeah, that's very smart. Actually, it makes sense. And but. I was almost getting. You know, the more you make stuff, the better you get at anything, right? Right. Like your first podcast is nowhere near what your last one sounds like, right? <laughs> Clearly, trust me, yes, night and day. So I thought I was getting better at it, you know, and I could, I was actually, I could kind of plan on like a future producing. And I was like writing stuff and I couldn't get anyone else to really act in it. So I ended up like acting in my stuff that I would write for myself. And so it last, the last thing I did at all, all of it culminated in this uh, wild attempt at a YouTube series that I made called Why Not Weiss? Why not? And I got Ron, I got Ron Jeremy to play my dad. We, I out, was Ron. at a I was at an autograph convention in New Jersey, and uh, I at the corner of my eye, I was like, "Oh my god, there's my dad!" I'm like, "Oh my god, that's not my dad." First of all, my dad's been dead for a year, and second of all, that's Ron Jeremy. Yeah. <laughs> so, but really, he looked that much like my dad out of yeah. the, out of the corner of my eye, and I just was like, I had the idea because a friend of mine had done stuff with him before, so yeah. I knew that he was like totally cool to work with and, to- and very funny right and so uh i invited him to like be my dad on my show and he was like yeah absolutely and i thought i was going to pay him like a lot of money and yeah. he basically did it for a ham sandwich and <laughs> a pair of uh crocs i was gonna say crocs in my head basically, i was thinking crocs. You, you, it's not you know god bless him he's not very expensive and so yeah and so uh the hustle and grind of hollywood outside of acting you're literally now just developing your own content selling yeah. it you know, that was flipping before it, it was cool. Like I sold a. Yeah, now uh, that's actually a dope career. You you yeah. are a content creator. Exactly. That's what I do. Basically, and that was the still on VHS. Yeah. I'm talking about like. That Damn. Was when so I you had to hire cool. like a whole crew of like. God. You gotta have like no digital machines. nothing. Everything's like. No, like I made a show and then passed it around in I think 2000, and that was still on VHS. Wow. Yeah. So it was a show where I was like a superhero, and I uh, <laughs> I took it to the um, Adam Sandler people, and uh, anyway, so um, <laughs> for show, it's so anyway, good, it's yeah, good, it's a long good. ass story. But anyway, no, nah, so you're good, you're good, bro. We got time, right? Yeah, with plenty. Yeah, you of already time. told me they're willing to cut anything. Anyway, yeah, great. 
So, um, uh, so yeah, basically, all of uh, my shit hit the fan, really. Like, the perfect storm of, like, uh, life things happening. So, my dad died. Mm. Who I Sorry was. Sorry about that. Thank you. I was his caretaker. He was 82. And we were best friends. It was so like. So you like watched it kind of like. Yeah, I mean, it. I was in the room when he died. Wow. So, which is, was, you know. My father it passed was a away. My thing. father passed away. He was in the, we were in the same house. Like he just like fell asleep on our couch. And then literally my mom found him. My mom's a nurse. So only thing I remember is my mom trying to resuscitate him. But nothing, like I didn't like, it was kind of like up and gone. Like, it was no, like, but it felt, process. it felt somewhat natural with him falling asleep on the couch. It, it did, yeah. God's, you know, so yeah. I can empathize with you on that just, like, sure. watching that. Not to dwell on that, but yeah. yeah but trust me, every time I hear that kind of thing. shit, I'll be like, man, you're a real one because that's not easy to just, it was especially watching it. Yeah. It was a thing that helped culminate in, like, a rage of this mental uh, illness problem that I had. But anyway, so my dad died. Um, I had this project that I was working on that me and the team that I was working with were for sure we were all going to sell it to HBO and we we're all going to be millionaires. I love you said for sure. Like that I didn't love that happen. Hollywood promise. Eric, oh dude. It's happening. We have the meeting set up. The oh, guys for- are financings are in. The invoices are sent. We were casting. I was I was definitely holding oh, casting sessions. Cast- it was it was already for happening. female actresses, yeah. Of course. For parts that aren't quite written yet, but we want to think of you. Stop. <laughs> I can <laughs> um, I can And uh and then so, uh, the, 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 the my dad dies. The show doesn't happen. Mm. The at least the, the lease for an apartment I was uh, I was living in came like ended. Where were you staying at at this time? I was I was at a really nice building in North Hollywood. Got you. And um, and then the a relationship that I was in with my fiance at the time ended. Come on, man. So the, all those things you happened. Have scripted this. <laughs> this is- it was it was rough. So Bro. like all those things happened, and I didn't take it very well. And Facts. you know, so like that's that's really. Uh, and then it began. He didn't even. He wasn't even like, hey, can you be like a good ass buzzkill right now? I just <laughs> no. share that story. Just no. Nah, I mean, you know, I'm gonna be honest with you though, and just <laughs> transparent because this is how we even talked in the car. Like when my father passed, because I always smoked weed. Like I always was smoking weed. I always partied. I always was that person. I always I always threw parties in high school. Like I was a party promoter popular fat kid like I was always that guy like everybody knew me like I always was laughing just lovable guy Should literally he's a drug dealer Is that he's a drug <laughs> I don't dealer? think so no I mean he's the hookup let's just say let's just he say was just I, everybody's friend I was That's everyone's all friend yeah, yeah. on all walks of life I in every way I can see that yes yeah, so, see yeah. Oh, yeah so long story longer <laughs> literally when I was talking about my father passing away once he passed away I came up on the most money I ever had in my life because of life mm-hmm. insurance stuff. you were how old I was 20 uh, five. It's eight years ago, so I'm 33 now. So what's the math? Was that six? Yeah, 26. 26. Yeah, 26. Yeah. So literally 26 years old. Have racks now. And probably not a lot, but let's just say a kid from Reno Valley. Yeah. From not really nothing. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, like my mom's like, okay, your dad left some money. We're gonna pay this off. Pay this off, and here you could just have this and do right by it. What do I do? Buy a bunch of Jordans, start buying hella ounces, throwing parties. Then, you know, start going to strip clubs, talking to dancers, start knowing that whole wave. Then I'm like, oh, it's networking because I want to throw a party. So I've, I justified in my head yeah. as a marketing budget. <laughs> it's, it starts getting dark. Yeah. Long story longer. Once you start conning yeah, yourself, it's over. The, yeah. that's, if you're a salesman, you could sell the shit to yourself. Oh, that's yeah. the sick part because yeah. you believe your own shit. Then it's like, that's where the addiction comes in. It's like, you you think other people are crazy because you're, you're like, what are you talking about? I could do, I'm chilling. Anyway, trust me, I can go down that rabbit hole. But long story longer, I literally started using on tour, going parties because I wanted to stay up, wanted to be awake. You know, Coke was my thing. That was my drug of choice that I was doing at that time. But I could afford it. So I didn't see it as a problem because I was kicking all these other rich people that I was doing. I'm like, bro, yeah. We on, like, I don't do crack. Leave me alone. I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm doing, I could have, this is the rich, I'm I'm thinking of every rapper, every, nigga, this is the, the play of shit. I'm on some real shit. I'm yeah. with the baddest females and we all doing it. This is the first time I'm experiencing this. Not knowing I'm also eating at an all-time high because I'm staying up all night, mm-hmm. eating crazy, not working out, gaining crazy weight, started pre-diabetic, higher blood pressure, Ankles start swelling up. I had to like sleep with my shit so I can get swelling down all, like crazy how, shit. How fast does all that start start happening? I would say within the first 
of me using like two year year mm-hmm. two years of me doing that. Like, First oh, like two year, years. Oh, yeah, okay. first two years so of me doing it. you were having that. fun out there. Crazy. Oh, dude, yeah. Crazy, that's like, fast. Yeah, that's a fun I feel, time. I'm a Capricorn. I have a very addictive personality. I love Capricorn. Yes, trust me. Oh. So I come in hot. If I'm going to do something, I'm committed. I love sure. it. If I'm going to be a preacher, I'm going to be the best preacher in the world, and I'm going to yeah. save thousands of lives. I'm going to be a DJ. I'm going to be the best. Whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to be the greatest. So if I'm going to be a user... I'm going to do it discreetly. Yeah. I'm going to do it at the nicest of places. Yeah. And it just did, 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 until literally you don't. And then it just gets worse and worse and worse. And then I'm now I'm like, why is it Wednesday? And I'm by myself in an apartment smoking cigs inside of the apartment. <laughs> no front, like Same, weird it's shit. It's weird, man. It's like I can totally, like, I can, I hate when people say, I can relate to yeah. that. No, but it's but fact. I can, I can relate to I what you're saying. I can also relate, yeah. And the thing that I love that you asked me a question, because I told you, like, I've been, um, I've been sober off that for you know, three and a half, excuse me, almost four years now. Oh, God bless. Thank you. Yeah. And I mean, one thing you asked me, you said, well, did you ever get a sponsor? Do you, I mean, or did you go through a program? Like, and I said, no, I just literally got real spiritual. I started meditating. I had a breaking point and I knew I had to stop. If I didn't stop, I was going to die. Yeah. I was overweight, using drugs. Like, it was too much going against. It was like, yeah. w- the food is going to take me. This this girl is going to take me. This drug is going to take me. Something's going to take me. I have too much feeding into my natural ego at all mm-hmm. times. I'm getting pleasured at all times. Right. That's not natural life. Damn, fool. You're making my day sound boring as hell. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's facts because no, that's, that's that fast lifestyle. Yeah, Because yeah, no, you can afford it. Yeah. Like, from not having it to be able to have it, I was like, I couldn't well, do it. Well, that's how it starts. Yes. And then you can't afford and it. And you cut it. <laughs> that you cut it. You know, probably in God's timing, so yeah. you didn't have to go all the way to the bottom of the bottom. So, Facts. you know, proud of you for that. Thank he you. He was able to not have to hit rock bottom. Right. Yeah. My rock bottom was, was just a at a party and, by myself, and yeah. I realized none of my friends was there. And I'm uh, with a bunch of people I really don't know. Yeah, yeah but, I, were you, but were you covered in shit and chicken bones? Oh, my God. That's rock bottom. <laughs> Damn. Is it? Well, it I mean, is? I'm sorry. Yeah, that about, that about, uh, yeah, That'll no. Do it, I, guess. I was do at it. a party in, in freaking Reno Valley, I think. <laughs> in a hill somewhere. Yeah, no, but so, and even reading your story and even kind of, if you want to share, you know, hitting those points and breaking to the point of like, okay, it's time to make a change. Cause of course, and like everything, you start self deprecating after all that happens. You start getting things to make you feel better. Anything, or I don't know. I don't know how it worked for you. I know it worked for me. You know. Well, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know what you're asking exactly. First of all, I want to just say the only reason I'm really talking about this is because apparently people find inspiration in this story. They do. So I give those, I give these details because I don't really know exactly how to be of best service. So right. That's the only reason I'm really talking about this. Otherwise, hey, we appreciate that. Otherwise, honestly. I'd be like, let's talk about something else. No, no of course. You know, that's I, yeah, my I, personality. I get but, it, yeah. But anyway, um, drugs for me, I, when I said I could relate to what you were saying, because I sort of was playing the role, a role, but for some reason, I fell into like the junkie role, and I was going to be mm. the best junkie. Damn. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's a line as a drug addict... Uh, I don't know that a, a lot of people can identify with this because they didn't get to where I was, like, homeless on the street. But there's a time where you, like, uh, you have to sort of surrender your integrity mm. because you're doing things that you can no longer, like, look at yourself in the mirror for. And wow. with most people, that's, like, the that and having some family is, like, you know, that's probably what keeps you from ending up on the street in a tent. And I remember at one point that I had to relinquish that self of uh, sense of self pride. Wow. Because I used to have a lot of pride in myself, you know, mm-hmm. a lot of, you know, self whatever. Like I said, self-worth. your confidence, even as a kid, yeah. was through the roof. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. And then now I was, you know, defecating behind dumpsters. That's where this drug had taken me. Wow. And so. I spent too long living in this area of not having any, not having, just not caring to if I liked the person looking back at me in the mirror. You know what I mean? And once you let go of that, God help you. You know that, you know, that's like, so you'll do anything 
Right, facts. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't have that, your conscience. You yeah, know? you have to let go. Totally. Yeah. Let go day. We heard it. I don't That's, know if you grew up in church, but I grew up in church and you hear it like, let go let and go let God. God. Yeah. Like that means that's deeper. That's easier said than done. Yeah. So I was hanging out with people that uh, I, you know, once you, once you're on the street, you have to learn how to survive. And I learned by these people that were doing horrible things, you know, so I was, I picked up on those things and then I, you know, I had to just become a different person. So, for probably about the last year I was out there, I don't probably was out there three years or, or longer. I wanted to get help and I wanted to get clean, but there just I couldn't there was I couldn't have, there was no resources for me. Mm -hmm. So that was what was tragic. I could have died out there, you know. No. And man. I wanted to get clean. I didn't want to be out there. Right. If people want to be out there and they're happy getting high, that's one thing, you know? Like yeah. what do you mean? wanted do? to change. Yeah, I wanted to get better and I couldn't. So luckily uh, well, I just got into trouble, and I met a very compassionate and wonderful judge who gave me a chance to get my life back, and instead of getting charged with a felony mm -hmm. for some shit I didn't do, I just want to say, I never really got on the record about that. Yeah, so, um, I love it. Nah, we're pretty, yeah. So, I, I, we know, we've seen, we've seen the pictures, like we've seen yeah, the things and, it, and all it, that, yeah. It, it wasn't the way it was reported, and it was that's frustrating, too, because I'm in a jail cell, I really can't respond to this and i don't know Damn. if you saw the way i looked i don't know that anyone would have believed anything i said no <laughs> or believed it was you honestly was yeah jarring. to be honest it was, it was with you jarring yeah, it was jarring yeah like cut to the bone i'm sorry that people had to see that because i know how they cherish like the, those movies and, but i think you know it's real and you know the opioid crisis is a real thing and, yeah and I think, and, and not, not to say like you're a sacrificial lamb or anything like that, but sometimes we need to see yeah. something like that to help the other people. Because it's like, if that can happen yeah. to him and he can still recover and be sitting here on a podcast laughing and joking with me, right. you know, three years later, if he can come here and be on the other side of it. A lot of people see, we see... Time and time again, there was a whole show, E True Hollywood Story, that was dedicated to just showing the rise and fall of people. Yeah. But no one ever hears about the recovery. Right. No one ever talks about, hey, you can really bounce back and live a life and be cool and everything can be great. And I guess it doesn't happen that often, is the sad it, truth of it. Yeah. Wow. It, and I think, too, that some of those pictures had to come out for people to be able to get to you, too. You know? Yeah. Like, I'll never forget where I was when I saw the last one. Oh, you mean for, oh, like, oh, I see. You, you know? Mean, yeah. For, so people knew I was in trouble. For people mean? to step in. Uh -oh. There was no way for people to know. Because if it's yeah. not publicized, how would people know? I mean, it's right. it's like a fucked up way to look it at is, it. It is. It is. But I get but what you mean, it, though. I mean, listen, I think everything happens in God's universe exactly the way that it's supposed to, right? And yeah. for whatever reason, I know you made the joke sacrificial lamb and... You know, I think that everybody has their their story carved out in the stars like long before we even enter this universe. And for whatever reason, part of your story was to have had that experience, right. which was just beyond anything that like when we were smoking weed at 16 years old at the Oakwood, if I'd looked at you and been like, you're the dude that's gonna like live on the streets for three <laughs> years. So like other kids maybe will never have to do that in their lifetime. Right. You've been like, Okay, you yeah. know, but like you were that guy, and it's it's hard to wrap your head around it. In that I'd have been way. so mad at you. You would have been pissed. You'd have been pissed. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, bitch, get the fuck so out of here. You know, but it's it's the truth, and it's it's just really interesting. Like when you look over the trajectory of somebody's life and the impact they're meant to make in like huge and also small ways on other people's lives. It's, I mean, we could sit here and talk about that shit all day long Fact. and get real deep with it and I've had to look at that kind of shit throughout my lifetime too and, and just there have been many times where I was so mad at God like why me why the fuck am I going through this until I finally got to a point where I was like no longer a victim behind it mm. but just the understanding that God never did anything to me only for me if only just so I could sit here with you today on a Monday evening and tell this story i mean that's enough right yeah. and, and i would love to hear too because i mean we we're that's talking beautifully yeah. that was beautiful yeah man 
I was just your story alone. I'm like, not as funny as him. I'll probably make well, he'll make no, you. I might make you cry. No, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> in, I'm interested. Yeah. No, but crazy. I'm interested in it because yeah. everyone, at least my audience and people, like I've been very vocal about my recovery. I've been very vocal about like what I've been through in my life, you know. And, and a lot of people, especially my friends and my community, they've seen me in that those times. Maybe not at such a lowest point as the way you've been through, but still a low point in my personal life that got me to break me down and break right. my ego down to build me to this person that I'm becoming today. You know, because God's still ain't done with me. I'm still well, got I mean, a lot of stuff. Who I'm determines gonna... what a low point actually is, right? I've had. You know, I've thought about that. I've had different bouts in my own personal sobrieties. Mm. I have I have many, many different sobriety dates. <laughs> right. And some have been real, like, classic, societal, rock bottom experiences where not quite living on the streets, but like, I mean, this, this, when we were pulling up, I'm like, we're in the cut. This was my hood. Like, this is where I bought dope Damn. for years and years and years. Wow. And I was the crack smoker. Like, mm. I mean, listen, I've, no offense, I've enjoyed it's many. Hard to imagine, right? I've enjoyed, it, I can't. It's blowing my uh, mind. It's like, wait, what? I've enjoyed many a line of cocaine at some of the finest restaurants and clubs all around Hollywood, my friend. But yeah. like I said, that only lasts for so long, right? right and then all of a sudden right. you wake up and you're like on third and Alameda, just hustling every day for a bag of dope and like a little dime of crack. And, you know, so, but then there have been also- describing a life right here, right? There have also been a lot of other times too, (laughs) where my relapse Mm -hmm. didn't look like anything that would be considered a a TMZ article or a rock bottom moment. But like you said, I couldn't look in the mirror because the person that was looking back at me was almost unrecognizable, not even aesthetically, but just like spiritually. Was there ever times for you when you were, I guess, in that life and you looked in that mirror and you hear those like, maybe like you even have flashbacks of like kids, like I would never do this, I would never do that. And like you make pledges or like, I was like hearing things, like it was just like, I knew what I was doing was wrong. Like, but then it was like, fuck it, you know, whatever, whatever, like whatever. And you just go back and you do it. And then into that voice, I just couldn't shut it up anymore. I just couldn't. It just took me over. Yeah, know? I mean, I think, at least for me, I yeah. have I have like a, a different story than Sean as far as like growing up in the industry. I mean, I think I've always been a pretty nice person, but I was like very broken from a very early age. Mm. Like I remember six, seven years old, waking up every morning feeling very heartbroken and having no kind of like tangible at six, seven years old reason as to why I was feeling like that. And this was a long fucking time where I'm going to date us right now. This is a long time ago in the 90s where like mental health was really not discussed. No one talked about that. Yeah. And you weren't prescribing Never. pills to kids back then and stuff like that. Like, oh, she's maybe she's depressed. Let's I mean, it, it, it just wasn't that. And, you know, I started acting very young, too. And I was a workhorse from I mean, before I was even speaking, I was a workhorse like that's almost what <laughs> you know, my parents carved out for me. So, you did know. Did you want to be an actress or did you like? I, I don't know. I don't wow. have a, I don't have an answer to that because they put me into acting when I was six months old. Oh, wow. So um, by the time I was like. You had to have enjoyed it because you can't be good at something and that successful sure. at something if you hate it. But th- th- did I or want to can. get into it? I oh. don't have an answer to oh. that. Gotcha. By the time I was like 10 years old, I was already, you know, semi-famous. And, um, and uh, but I don't think I like fell in love with it until um, I... I, I don't think I fell in love with it until I was already kind of past the point of have, having had no structure Right. Um, or discipline or um, the conversations that you have with kids of like, this this is wrong, this is right, da 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 yeah. It was just like a, you know... You just a, woke up and you were at work and it was lights, camera, action. Yeah, and then also there were no rules for me because I was the sole breadwinner of my house. So it was That's very, a mind It was very fuck hard to kid. tell me what to do. I yeah. seen a movie, um, I don't know how extreme or real it was, it was called Honey Boy. That Shia LaBeouf yeah, did beautiful movie. Fucked me. And he also up. he also yeah. stole my idea because I've always wanted to play my mom in my life story. Yeah. So thank you, Shia. <laughs> you motherfucker. I think there's still room. You can still do. Your no, story. I would love to see that because even yeah. six months old, like as like it was crazy. You don't know it not at least your focal point of living was on set in a way because that's it. That's what it was. So I fell in love with it 
right as I was going off the deep edge and right as I was about to lose it. Um, and up until that point, you know, I I was introduced to drugs and alcohol at a very early age mm. because it started in my home. Um, and uh, so, you know, where Sean was saying it was about 36 or 37, by that time, I was already, you know, six years sober Ooh, <laughs> or whatever, God. or whatever Damn. it was. And had had multiple, multiple bouts in rehab and in and out of sobriety and recovery and um, so yeah, I so you knew when you seen him at that lowest point, you knew you recognized what it was, or did you? you? Well, it was, it was a so yeah, of course. I mean, obviously, yeah. he was unrecognizable, but it was it was like so much. I'm gonna tell this story because it, it's nah, please. such a profound story just for my beginnings of my experience with Sean. So obviously I remembered him as a kid and we weren't like best friends growing up at all, but we were in, at that time in the nineties in young Hollywood, there was like probably about 200 really famous kids. Right. And they all just migrated like somewhere you would, I would run into Sean every day. Hey, what's up? Was yeah. Joe. And then I maybe wouldn't see him for like three years. And then maybe I'd see him real quick and that was it. But by same the time- Same like in the music industry, yo. It's the same right. thing. Yeah, I'm already right. knowing. Yeah, you see people, you, you do a tour know. with them. Then you don't see them for days. Yeah. To, I mean, years later, yeah. But then, you know, when we talk now and we're like, oh shit, do you remember this guy? And he, he was like, yeah, that was like one of my closest. I'm like, me too. How did we not hang Damn. out more? But so, <laughs> but by the time- Oh, you could put it right. I here. hadn't what? seen Sean oh, for a while. I was already pretty close to living down in this area. Mm. So I like my story with drugs is pretty insane too. And by the Please time I was fully, you. fully into it, I didn't want anyone to know where I was. So, so where were I you living before? I never embraced it? it. I was like, I woke up one day and was just an IV addicted heroin user, <sighs> crack smoker, living in a very, you know just in the most dangerous areas of Los Angeles, copping dope, and that was my deal. And I completely removed myself from any semblance of like Hollywood that I'd ever been in because wow. I was horrified for anyone to see me like that. And I didn't see a light at the end of the tub. I didn't think it was gonna end for me. Fact. I thought I was gonna die out here. I really thought I was gonna die on the street somewhere in downtown Los Angeles. God had different plans, that's what I'm saying. Everything happens for a it's reason. Crazy. But as far as Sean goes, so yeah, I mean, I had, saw, I had seen the first mugshot and I was like, you know, my heart hurt. Um, and uh, I didn't really know what to do, as I'm sure a lot of people don't know what to do. And then the second one came out and I was actually at um, like a tribute so show for Prince. It's my favorite <laughs> artist of all time. I am R. beyond. All right, that was a hard day for me. It's still a hard day for me. Was without that 420? I think it was April 20th he passed away. I don't remember, but it was like it was five days. years, five-ish years yeah. ago, something like that. Yeah. So I was at a tribute tribute show for Prince and uh, just watching like the dopest artist doing like all his covers and stuff. And someone had sent it to me on uh, Instagram, mm. the mugshot, the TMZ. And I saw it and something like, I mean, I had like a visceral reaction to it. I had a like a spiritual reaction to it. I had an internal reaction to it because it wasn't just like this dude that I ran into every so often back in the day at Oakwood or at clubs or whatever. And we'd like smoke a little weed and you know, that's right. it. It was like one of my kind. So it was mm. a child actor. I don't mind that term at all. That is gotcha. what it was. It was like a fellow artist. Mm -hmm. If you want to throw in an adorable child actor. Just like <laughs> the cutest, but not, not just a child, but the cutest I child love actor. It. I love um, it. And yeah. it was also, you know, a fellow um, addict yeah. that, um, that ne needed somebody to have his back in a way to where he wouldn't be taken advantage of. And I have not had this happen to me many times in my life, but I heard a voice from God that said, you're the one that needs to do this. Wow. And I went, I remember I went home and I told my boyfriend at the time, I said, um, I think I need to figure out a way to get to him. That's what I was gonna ask you, like, how uh -huh. do you like, get to and, him? Like that's- and my, my boyfriend was like, good luck. And I was like, he's in jail or something. And I was like, I have to figure it out. Like I have to, I have to do this. I don't know why I have to do it, but I have to do it. And I kind of put all, uh, some of the Are pieces together. Are you podcast? Together. I just ask you to speak yeah. and like continue. 
Um, are you sure that voice you heard w wasn't my probation officer? <laughs> I'm positive. Okay. I was just <laughs> curious this whole time. I didn't time. even know that guy at that point. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I just kind of put some of the pieces together and I, um, and sorry, I didn't no, no, and no, that there was, was funny. Um, I'm trying to because I'm so in right now. It's like a yeah, movie was, right now. I'm I like, know. wait, what? I know it's a, it's a crazy story. And uh, so, um, yeah, and there was a, a friend of Sean's that, um, you know, had kind of done some some work around trying to help get him, you know, connected with the right people as well so he could get help. And right. um, so that person was really instrumental. In oh, you were talking about Sam. When Sam. I told Sam, right. I went home that, yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, I made my way to Sean, but not verbally mm -hmm. because he was in jail. And also, too, there had been so many years of separation between us. I mean, at least 20 years right. that I didn't even know if he'd remember me or I'm not. Saying that I didn't care, was though. Crazy. It wasn't about, like, you know, I want to reconnect with my homie. It was just like... This is one of us. This yeah. is one of me. This is somebody cut from the same cloth as me, and I need to step in and help. And right. so, um, yeah, I just, you know, and and ironically, I am a director of a drug and alcohol treatment facility. Talk about that too. Shout I out will. that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's you know, it's interesting. It's I was I was lined up in the perfect place at the perfect time in the right. perfect position to step in and help. And I knew that the judge had required a certain amount of, uh, you know, a, rehabilitation yeah, hours. Yeah, and. Of that uh, and I was able to do that. So we got a letter, got him out, went to one place. It was not the right fit. And then I, I talked to him on the phone. That was the first time I talked to him I was going to say, what was that first conversation like? And I was like, I don't know if you remember me. <laughs> uh, this is Natanya Ross. And we used to smoke weed together back in the day. <laughs> and uh, I'm not like a psycho or anything like that. I'm also a child actor, like blah, blah, blah. And I just happen to work in treatment now. And you don't have to do anything you don't want to do in order to get help. And we got him over to this place in Lancaster called Quest. And, um, and yeah, there's two important things to note there. First of all, you didn't uh, bring me to your treatment place. So it I wasn't did not, like, no. it wasn't like she reached out to me to like bring a customer to her place. So. Yeah. I like you made that. No, 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 no. Yeah. I wouldn't have even thought that, but yeah. people would hear that oh, yeah, and probably think that. Yeah. I just thought of that yeah. too. So like yeah. that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, and and also too, I because I've been doing this so long, I I instantly felt very protective of Sean and his recovery. Yeah. And I I know how Holly I know how the world, not even Hollywood, I know how the world is, and I know how they like to take advantage. And I yeah. know how like people like to say, well, if you do this show for us. We'll give you this much treatment for, for or whatever That's what it happened. Was. I was linked up with a daytime talk show and they were going to basically foot the bill for my treatment in exchange for me filming all these. Come on, man. Yeah, man. basically making a reality show on, out man. of it. And, and, um, and then when we talked that first that's time. That's the joke. I'm sorry not to like, that's no. that's kind of like a slap it like, yeah, I'm going to do it, but we got to film the whole thing. We're going to like, it would have been like, bro, different. Because right. it would have been different. If they know anything about recovery, it doesn't mean just because you go to this, it's a process. It's a process right. steps. Yeah. And like you were kind of explaining, it's, it's process. Well, to they that. were just looking for good television at that right. point. They're not actually and looking I, out for you. And, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> and he had just gotten out of jail and like, uh, you know, and I, I don't even know if you had insurance at that time. And no, I, I, I said, let me bring you, They, I'll get you this scholarship. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do to get better. Like, you just fucking don't, you know? And I think I just kind of decided in that moment that I was, to the best of my ability, try not to let anyone ever take advantage of him mm. and put him in a situation that he might later regret in life where he was like, fuck, I really didn't want to do that. And also get him the fuck out of LA so right. we could just recover in peace and not have to be all of these things that the world knows him as. Right. And, you know, not be an actor, not be somebody that was just on TV, just be a human being and heal, you know? And like get a few good square meals and sleep in a nice bed and get some good therapy and all. And PS, all stuff that somebody has done for me once. Like, I was, that's I was it. gonna ask that's that. Like, like, I was gonna yeah. say, did you have someone that was for you on your initial first I've step? I've had many people, Got many you. people step in and help me. Um, I, you know, so that happened. And then I actually didn't see him for the first time until he completed that treatment program. And then we got him over to another really great place in the valley called Interactions IOP, which is an aftercare program. And 
he was in a sober living and that's when I could finally see him Got for the you. first time. And gotcha. now so I'm falling in love, right? She's love bombing me with these texts. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking of you. I don't think I hope you're OK. I love you. You're going through this. To, we're together. And now, like, she's meaning it. She's meaning it. And then I see her. <laughs> and I'm like, I told my friend after she left our first meeting, I was like, bro, give me a year. I'll marry this woman. Wow. And so I said, I'm going to get clean. So I can, you know, make a good impression. And then I think after I made my one year mark, we had some kind of celebration. And, and she was like, yeah, we're so happy for you. Me and my boyfriend, who's a rock oh. star, who oh. happens to be a rock star. So Who's now my fiance. Who's now her fiance. <laughs> so but now Sean at, and him are friends. Yeah, so I mean, like, it, it's it's it doesn't ever. matter why you get clean. <laughs> you just get clean. I mean, even if your heart's going to get broken in the end, at least I'm sober <laughs> no. for it. At least I can feel it. Yeah. However, let me, this, let me turn I'm this just, one. I'm just no, I love it. I love it. I but love now it. we're best friends. <laughs> no, I love it. Yeah. Oh, sure, and yeah. Sean has stepped in and helped me in moments of crisis where I'm very depressed, can't get out of. Just because I'm sober doesn't mean that there are not days I can't get out of bed or I'm having a nerve, I had a stalker situation recently and like, this is the first guy I called and he's like talking to me like, take it as a compliment, you know, with his humor. And I mean, the guy was saying some pretty flattering things. He was like, <laughs> I mean. You're like the best person to call for anything for like off the Richter. You're like, well, look, you can look at it this way. I and had it a, funny. <laughs> I had a stalker write me some shit in there. You saw it, right? Yeah. They're like, you're the most horrible person. You're even worse now that you're sober. And, uh, and when you're back in the limelight, you're going to be even worse. And I go, you mean you'll think I'll be back in the limelight? <laughs> <laughs> I go, you get me. Thank you. You, like, you, you do. Cause it I was a great you, response. She may be mad at me. He or she may be mad at me. But they recognize my potential. They know you, know? you can be back out there. Yeah, so I'm now not me, mad at Now me, I just break down. I, I can't find the humor and stuff like that. So I call <laughs> Sean. I'm crying. I'm like, that's it. This is how I'm going to die. And Sean's like, oh, you know, what do you need me to do? And wow. so it's, it's the, the relationship has turned into something so incredibly special. And we get to do cool shit like this. Right. We travel around the country together doing autograph signings now. And we've just become like a family, you right. know? And, you know, I, I know that when you are coming out of a dire situation and somebody's like, I will be ride or die for you. Mm -hmm. You're like, bull fucking shit. No way. Like, this person's definitely full of shit. They're making it up. Blah, well, blah, 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 for blah. the first two years back in this whole thing, like, I would get into trouble sometimes, and the first thing I would do is call you whenever. Yeah. So basically, you heard from me every time I was in a crisis. Right. And you would fix the crises all I the would. time. <laughs> so, I don't know. If I love you, it. If you want people to call you less in a crisis, don't yeah. fix the crises all the time. I don't know. You. Well, or just, like... <laughs> I love these theories. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> you, she didn't do or anything when to you make a, me. when you make a commitment to someone that you're going to be their friend through thick and thin, you just show up. Facts. You do what you need to do. And yeah. I think that's okay. the I think that's, that's the overall that's a nicer important way thing. To say it. Thank you. It's a way better way yeah. to say it. Yeah, that's a nice <laughs> Um, powerful, <laughs> strong, you know, platonic relationships like that, especially in recovery. I like how he said platonic. He had to just like. Had to. Had to, I had to say it. Had to remind me? You had to rub that shit in your face. <laughs> Our great. I mean, you didn't have to. Chose. I did it. Big Look. Cali. Wow. <laughs> Big Cali oh. keeping it real. Because it's just real. <laughs> Look, it's, but I believe that's a, a vital part in recovery. Oh, dude. Yeah. You see, like, we, we're on the same wavelength. I think that you need that. Like, you need someone that literally, I just want you to be cool. Stop love, thinking, yeah, I need to love you. I went through that myself. You Who know, was I had your a, love and support. Yeah, you need that. Who was yours? Oh man, well, my one of my well, literally doing my podcast with my friends Reem um, oh, and so Kel. Your group, your my group, um, Reem Cashes, Kel, you know, um, Demore, all you to be. I don't want to, you know, Dre B, all of them. I can go down the list. Jordan, the, my engineer right here, he literally the man's man seen me when I used to come two shows, yayed out, yeah. shit still on my nose after like. Take it like, all right, hold on. I've been up for like five hours. I'm gonna do this pod though. We're gonna knock it out. Let me go in the bathroom real quick. And I have to like wash my face and try to come out and yeah. do his shit. But he'll make me look and sound great every time, you know? And he trusted in me and believed. So just a, a whole, I was blessed enough. I, I God put a tribe around me. Mm. And they never like judged me and they never took it. Now the people that did, I almost 
I needed that too. You needed the you people to think judge them you. More. Yeah. You gotta thank them more. I needed the people because yeah. I was talking about it in the pod that I'm doing. It's called Energy that I was doing with Bree. We we're just talking about it. And I was talking about the story of when this girl I was talking to at the time, and she, I liked her. Like literally, swear to God, we talked about it. It's all documented. I like her. And then we were like talking. Connor and I try to make a move, like, hey, look, I wanna date you. I wanna do like we should do this, right? She said, Callie, like real talk, I love you. And I know you love me, but I know you will love me more than you love yourself. And I can never be with a man that loves me more than he loves us. Oh, wow. Self. Wow. Because look what you're... And then, like, at that moment, I was like, well, then fuck you then, bitch. I don't give a fuck about that <laughs> custer. I was like, I don't need you. Get the fuck out of my house. Like, all that, right? She's like, where you been this whole time? <laughs> yeah, <you're laughs> already. So literally, custer did that whole thing. But then, as, you know, months progress, I'm thinking, like, she's right. Like, I didn't care about myself. I was yeah. staying up 20 hours a day, trying to DJ, trying to, and justifying, like, hey, I'm partying, I'm in the studio yeah. doing things, but in the studio is nothing but three dealers, a couple strippers, and like two of the homies that don't even really do music. And we're just listening to music real loud, debating, doing drugs, yeah. you know? That was my bag, you know? Yeah. And I realized I needed to stop, and I needed that change, and she literally let me rock. Like, She's one of my good friends, you know, I fuck with her to this day, but... It seems like one of the biggest uh, turnoffs that we have in people is weakness. Mm. Like, women hate weakness in men, you know, yeah. and, you know... No, facts, versa. facts. And uh, that's symptomatic behavior, right? Like, when you're talking mm -hmm. about loving your girl more than yourself. Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, you, you know... It's easy to love someone more than you love yourself, though. It's hard to love yourself, honestly, if you've never thought about it. Like mental health, like we were saying, it wasn't. Ta I didn't grow up in a house where it was like, so how's your mental health today? Like, how do you feel inside today? It was like, nah, bro, right. we gotta go to work. <laughs> like right. mental health, my landlord yeah. don't care about mental health. My yeah. landlord cares about the, the deposit on yeah. the first. My mom was a nurse; she worked hard. My dad was a chef, yeah. which explains the weight. You know, right. so literally, I was in the kitchen eating, and he explained and all that. But addiction ran in my family. Yeah, that's how the men dealt with it. They went out, they party, did what they did, they came home. As long as you took care of home, you know, it was cool. But you can't really love somebody else, like, as a romantic partner, a friend, or what have you, right. until you truly love yourself, or you will continue to try and heal right. your traumas yeah. through another person. <sighs> Fuck. And then that person becomes your higher power when, like, that can't, it, you can't rock like that. I used it to be like, all right, I'm gonna lose weight once I get in a relationship because oh, yeah. that, that would motivate me to oh, lose yeah. weight because yeah. I gotta be here for my girl. Yeah. But then if I'm already pulling females, I'm pulling beautiful women, I'm having relationships, like I can't really justify me losing. It's like, bro, it don't matter. I'm, I have all the girls I want. I have the money I want, I have this. Yeah. But that's just a sick addiction. It, it is. I call it evil because it's always good and evil and it does an evil yeah. spirit just talking to me. Yeah. yeah. It's funny, as you guys are, had both just mentioned loving yourself, I can't really say that I've like taken the time to sit with myself and and check in uh, on that level, like to see right. if I love myself or not. It's important. Or, yeah, that's I mean, why meditation is important. Guess so, I yeah. mean, for me at least, I need to check in because yeah. I'm a real. I got to do four or five different things at all times. Yeah. I'm always doing things. If I don't check on myself, my tank runs empty. I realize yeah. God put me on this earth as a vessel. So people are going to always take from me information, laughs, a joke, whatever. They're going to right. take, 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 take. And nothing's wrong with that because that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to be that. But God has to fill me you gotta take so care of I can. Yourself. Yeah. And that's yeah. what I do for me. But, yeah. I, but I didn't learn that until recovering. It's a, it's, that is, it's a hard process yeah. to get through there, especially when you're kind of like ducking and dodging and hustling and all of these years of addiction and like, not necessarily you're a bad person, but you're doing really bad things. Yeah. You get to a point where you truly believe that you're a piece of shit. So how do you like repair that part of your brain that believes that you're no good and that you're a piece of shit in order to get back to a place where you love yourself? And that comes through one right action after another, after another, one mm. esteemable act. And then like really figuring Being out- Being happy for the small victories too. Sure, I mean also like, this, I think this is kind of one of the, my saving graces in life is that like the more I think about what I don't have, the less I appreciate what I do, mm. right? And the more that I love what I do have, the less I could care less about what I don't have. And God has always given me exactly what I needed. Not always necessarily what I wanted, 
<laughs> but I exactly hate. what I needed. It's like you and don't that's, have. That's a tough lesson to learn you, you, too. The fridge might be empty, but it has sandwiches in there, and it has right. water, and all the lights Mastros. are on. And it might not. Exactly. It might not be Masters, but that Lunchable is gonna feed you just as good. As a you know? spoiled only child, yeah. that's the fucked up thing in my head yeah. that I can never understand. But yeah. you have to. That ego death. That's why I'm, I praise that. I'm happy those times yeah. happen. I'm happy for the break. I live oh, in it. Yeah. I love it. Thank you. Made you who you are. L literally yeah. like lifting weights. Yeah. Why do you think your you arms live. hurt when you lift weights? Because yeah. you break down the muscles to build stronger. So what yeah. do you think your spirit and your soul is going to do? Yeah. So yeah. sometimes it takes actions like what Sean was explaining, like what you were explaining, like I was explaining. That's why these podcasts, that's why I have these podcasts. Because people have to have a place to talk about this stuff. Yeah. Where I'm not trying to be a get me question. Like, ooh, so tell me about the time you're doing this. And like, no, I don't I don't know like the process. Because I know I went through my process. And I aspire to do things, and people that's been and did things and are been and seen things that I want to learn right. in every aspect. Yeah, so I found a great uh, source of uh, strength and direction from the twelve step program when I first got into residential treatment. Mm -hmm. So the twelve step program that AA and the NA is is based on, and I really started praying to God whether you're there or not, right. can you please remove this obsession from me? Mm. Please, get this monkey off my back. If you're there, help me with this. Right. And consistently doing that over probably about a month or so, and it happened. Literally, Facts. like a switch went off. And Facts. So I don't know how that came to be, whether it was an answered prayer or whether it was my mind, yeah. you know, fixing itself on a new mindset. I think that's how or... swagged out God is. Like, it really don't matter. Really, he, it loves right. you. How many different ways is it to get to L.A.? I ask people that all the time. As long as you get you there. You can take the 60, you can take the 10, the 110, the 710. The freaking, it's, it's 30 different ways to get here. But as long as you get to downtown at whatever time, you've there. done it. So here's what I say about... Uh, and and I, he don't even care about the time. That's how much of a swag he got. He'll let you real. rock. Like, all right, do what you do. Like, until you get to me, it's up to you. Huh. Yeah, just You're call, going to get to me call eventually. Call when you're downstairs. As you, every, <laughs> it said, and not to be all you know religious, but it says in the Bible, every knee shot by every tongue confess. If you don't believe me, ask a hood dude that don't believe in God when he gets shot. The first thing he says. God. Oh, my God. God. Yeah. Or mom. Oh, my God. Or, or mom. Or his mama, yeah. Well, here. God. Here, my, yeah, it's the same thing. Creator, I mean, it's, source, yeah. beginning, alpha, I've, uh, you know. Here, here's what I've been. I've, I've been thinking about and I've noticed about a lot of the young younger kids that come through uh, the program. A lot of people say they don't believe in God without having really searched for God. Mm. So if God was as good as he say uh, as they say he is, mm -hmm. it, wouldn't he be worth a search? And yeah. so people, if they lose their wallet, right? Mm -hmm. You search for your wallet feverishly wow. until you find like that, that shit. Yeah. If it takes you three hours, you're, you're going to search for you're it. You're going to tear down everything. So my else. guarantee is to anyone listening to this, that if you make that kind of search for God, you will find it because God wants to be found. He wants you to know him. But you're yeah. not going to find it if you don't go looking. Even if you want a pack of cigarettes, you've got to sit out to the store, right? Facts. So... I don't I, I I don't see uh enough emphasis on that element of you know the 12 steps is really a spiritual program. Yeah. What he's saying is he's giving you a, an instruction manual on how to have a spiritual awakening. Cuz the That's last see, yeah. last step says after having had a spiritual awakening through going through these steps. So you need what, that. That's you what need they're that. saying they're saying without that you can't recover. Facts. Because so. you have to know it's something other than you in my head because you tried it your way. You saw what right. happened when you did it on your own. Like, I saw where it was. I was, I DJed. I was always a good DJ. I always knew music. I always knew how to talk. I thought it was me. So I was like, yeah, I'm the best DJ. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm doing it. Bro, you're going to end up in a freaking house. You ate out of your mind. None of your friends around. If you have a heart attack right here, no one can get to your mother because none of them know you here. They're all here because of your name on the smallest of scales. I can only imagine if I was a millionaire and had 50 cameras in front of me and I'm DJing freaking for Paris Hilton and Kendall Jenner and all them. Right. It would have been blowing up. It would have been, would I have been strong enough to recover and talk about it like this? Who knows? Hopefully God would have gave me the strength. But I know the truth though. That's why, and when you're saying that, it's, it just makes me feel like even happy and I even talk about it excited because it's like, I actually did the right thing. Like, it was just working. Because I meet people that are like-minded from all different walks of life 
through crazy situations, oh, but yeah. yet we have a similar nucleus appreciation for a higher source that got us to be a better person, right. which is literally something you can't buy. You you can't. You, spirit, you just said it was the last step. We yeah. can focus on one through 11, but that 12th one, it, yeah. it involves something other than you. That's right. And I, I've also spent a lot of time, I don't mean to be hogging in the com- conversation. No, I was, I've been spending a lot of time lately thinking, now that I might have a platform to be able to help some addicts, what are some things that I can say? What are some things I've learned throughout my journey? What are things that have worked that I can say to help people? And it's almost dawning on me that there's nothing I can say or do to help anyone because the desire has to come from here. And if that desire is legitimate, then you'll find what works for you. You'll find your AA. You'll find your community. You'll find what works because you want it. Well, you know what will work? Not to cut you off. You know what works and you know what you can do? Tell your story. Yeah. Sure. Be you. Be the vessel. Yeah. Be the visual. Be the audio. Be the open of questions. Like, if kids come to you, because you got to realize, everyone's still, the party's still going on. Whether we're clean and drinking water and having good on a Monday, it's lit right downstairs, down the corner. It's still happening. There's people that still run. So if people just slip up and hear this, they want to hear real. Yeah. They don't want sugar-coated. You could have never talked to me when I was deep in my world and you're like, yeah, Big Cal, you need to lose some weight, you know, because that's, it's going to be held like, That's the care. other thing. It's hard to, you know. But just be you. Yeah. Just be the vessel. Like, that. And, All right. Like, no, I'll it, take your advice. To bring it back sense. to spirituality and religion even a little bit, even the story of Jesus. Like, he wasn't pushing his agenda on people. He was just, like, mobbing with his homies through the desert. Well, that's the thing. And then people yeah. were just kind of listening to him, like, dang, what you're saying is kind of lit, bro. Yeah. Like. I kind of dig it. Well, it's attraction rather than promotion. That's the point. Right. And I think that, like, if you just, like, lead by example, you know, and, like, do the right thing as often as possible, even when nobody's looking. That's See, that's the key. Like, I am I can do the right thing if I all eyes are on me. Facts. You know, but I think where, like, most of my magic has really come from is doing the right thing when nobody's looking. And, Facts. And I don't need, like, big accolades for it, which... It's just part of the human condition anyway. You do something good. You want a little pat on the back or whatever. But I think if you just like show up and live your life in a really consistent and spiritual and um, centered, uh, service-centered way, that it attracts people to you. And it also attracts situations to you. Isn't, right? that the, like, isn't that, would you say that that's like the most highest quality of a quote-unquote boss is servitude? Is being able to serve your community, serve well, your I think people, so. I think serve the people, yeah, I don't, and being I think that if person. If you don't have a, a heart based in service, and that and and that can be, I mean, obviously in like a twelve step program, that means a specific thing. To me, I never wanted to like just figure out how to be of service only in a twelve step program, but like like you just said, I mean, we are we have communities in the city of Los Angeles that are desperate and dying for our help. Like, what can you do? Even sometimes it's just as simple as like, you pick up the phone for your friend, or maybe it's something bigger, like you figure out how to make a little impact on one of the the underprivileged communities in our city. Facts. You know, or you, even something also as simple as like, you smile at somebody, and you just be yeah. a nice, decent person, and you don't be like a shithead like the rest that of us. That works for pretty girls. I don't, I smile no, at people no. and they, no. they get scared as fuck. You're right though, no one talks about the little things. It no takes the little, the little things. One yeah. of my one of my favorite podcasts I used to listen to was um, Shane Powers. I don't know if you've heard of Shane Powers. Mm-hmm. Shane pa- he used to be on um, Op Future Radio on Dash Radio, but okay. he anyway. Long story short, one of the first podcasts I ever listened to. He used to have this thing it was like one plus one plus one plus one. That's all it's about. It's just literally oh, I've taking heard, one. I've heard that. Yeah, it's literally taking one thing and another thing and another oh, thing. Boy, Don't boy. worry about the bigger bin. For people like us, oh. dr- goal driven people, like we need to do this and do this. Yeah. It's like, bro, once you figure out how many cameras you need, and right. then figure out how many lights you probably want to need, and then figure out, you know, what yeah. do you really want to do? Like, how do you really want to like figure out the small stuff? If you can't afford something, then think about something else that you can do, and then yeah. Chip out of the way at yeah. that, but that's easier said than done. Yeah, the one that plus, takes forever to do. The one plus one plus one too is also a really good theory as far as like I think a lot of people don't get up and do stuff that makes a significant change because they're like I'm just one person I can't do shit. But it just takes one person to inspire one more to inspire one more to start, and then all of a sudden you have a little crew of people that are inspired to go out and, and make some fucking change. And I feel like know? that's what Sean literally I was talking about it in the car and even now like that's. 
you standing up even doing like coming on my platform which i'm so appreciative of you just sharing your story but talking about the recovery part of it and talking about like look i know i want to do something but i really don't know how because it really is you that's that's real that will help somebody. It's like, bro, you're not here like, look at me. I'm better. So you can be like, no, bro. I'm just saying like, hey, I had to decide that I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Eventually, it had to happen. Something, like something happened where it was like, this is it. This is over. I need to recover. Luckily, the universe, God, Allah, whatever you want to believe in, put this beautiful person in front of you in your life. She put together everything. You were able to do, but then it took you. It's like you I, I, doing yeah, the I work. Inter- I want to interject. I came in in the beginning and just gave him a little bit of the push. He right. did it. Facts. He did this. Facts. I was just there to kind of pull a couple strings yeah. early on. He did it. Like, he, you know, and and now we have this very equal, loving, beautiful friendship where, like, we're on an equal playing field here. And I rely on him as much as he relies on me. Wow. I mean, he might call me with some crises. Did I say that right? But I call, him, <laughs> I, I call him with some dumb shit all the time. I'm like upset about something or this and that. And I cannot calm myself down or regulate myself. And he, you know, whether it's with a joke. I mean, his humor is such a gift, too. And I love, no, for he real. Has, <laughs> he has made so many of his friends and the people in his life so joyful just based on the fact that he can, Aww. like, eradicate a, you know, I'm like a nervous little Jew all the time. I'm like, oh my, ah, what do I got? And he's like, <laughs> we got this, just chill, it's okay. And then tell me a joke. And I'm like, I mean, even like, on the fuck. way here, I was dealing with a situation that I was like very unhappy about, very uncomfortable with. And like, I can't even remember what the fuck that situation was Love anymore. It. Just sitting here with you guys. That's the power of connection, though. It is. I can tell That's, you on the way home. I'll tell you. Uh, what. Please don't remind me. <laughs> <laughs> That's the power of connection. But he did this shit. You know, he really wow. did. And Salute thank you for saying uh, that. Yeah. Salute to you for that, though. Thank honestly, you, man. man. Uh, honestly, I'm proud of my accomplishment because the other way would have been horrible, right? Right. But, um, recovery is a very strange thing because you you accomplish things and reach milestones by not doing something. Right. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, right. the, it's the only thing. I never looked at it like that. I've never thought about it like that. Never thought about it like that. Anything yeah. else, you got to do something. You got to learn something. You got to you know, graduate, get yeah. a license. Yeah. This is like, you just have to not do some shit. And so. then you'll be sure. Exactly. That's so. right. Yeah, that's the... It couldn't be any easier. Wow, but you know, it, in but, theory, but it's so easy. It's difficult. Sometimes, right? Not and isn't that the is most? So isn't hard. that most things in our life? Like it's sure. so easy. That's the difficult part. Yeah, yeah. Like the yeah. Bible itself, people debate and fight over, but it's really just up to interpretation. It says study, it says make up your own thing. Think about it. Interpret it how you want. Whatever route you want to take yeah. to me, use it. No, nope, that's too hard. This is the way, or else you're like, no, bro, that ain't how it works. I, not to get into like a whole. R- no, you're good. You're good. Debate. But I was in jail where I have done most of my best reading. <laughs> sure. Oddly sure. enough, there's only a couple of things to do in jail. You can read, you can uh, lift weights, or you can do something else totally by yourself. I got you. Um, <laughs> I, I don't, I've never been a big reader. The weights are very heavy. But, okay. Um, we know why did I saying. choose to reveal that about those things? <laughs> yeah, what was I talking fun. about? I mean, we're not, we, we're not like You're dumb. saying religion, can, you're yeah. talking about reading yeah, in yeah, the Bible. So yeah. in jail, uh, I read uh, Science and Health with mm. Keys to the Scripture, which is the Christian science, oh. their textbook, basically. Right. And I could never understand any of the Bible, no matter, matter how many times I've tried. Mm-hmm. And this book actually made sense of it through their interpretation right. in a way that it just made the whole thing seem so beautiful and wonderful and made me want to get baptized. I even got baptized two months ago. So Wow, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Wow, total transformation, man. That's, that's real. And now you 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 <laughs> about to start your stand up. If you you've already done it, you were working with Russell Peters. Yeah, he's been hooking me up with, with gigs. That Shout out Russell so Peters, cool. man. Oh man. How did yeah, you, you so just nice. know him from back in the day or like? Dude, I it was about four years ago. I was in the midst of my homelessness, like, you know, bad. And I ran into him behind a deli in Santa Monica. And I go, Russell. What's up, man? Because I was a big fan of his. And he, uh, he kind of, uh, you know, in, went, come over. And I walked over and he handed me a $100 bill. Damn. He was so cool, dude. Like, you know? Damn, just like, here, bro. Wow. 
I was, use. I was like, come on, man. You're Russell Peters. Give me another one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> He's only got the 39 million. Oh, he was so nice. And then so uh, a few months ago, I I reached out to him and I was like, Russell, I don't know if you remember me, man, but I'd love to open for you someday. And he's like, yeah. that day's now. That's so, so yeah, tight. That's how cool he is. Were you always doing stand-up before? I always People my whole life have been telling me to do stand-up. But You're fucking hilarious. Thank you, man. Now. But I never really like so. focused on it and did it and made it a thing. So I'm kind of doing that now. I love you doing know, it. Laughter but saying real things behind it is probably one of the greatest things. Like, why do you think people love Carlin so much, bro? Oh, like, absolutely. Like, he said so much, like, real shit, but you're real. laughing the whole time, but it's real shit he's saying. Well, laughter is a real medicine. We it know is. that. Yeah. It's like one of humans' natural built-in yeah. mechanisms. Yeah. There was this documentary where this woman was dying of cancer, mm -hmm. and she locked herself in a hotel room, or her grandkids did, and existed fed her fed this woman nothing but a diet of like uh three stooges and laurel and hardy for months and cured her terminal cancer That's wow crazy i don't know if it's bullshit or not but it's great I mean, no it's great it sounds great like, even yeah. if it is i'm with it that's insane but well i'm that. saying like we're kind of like not to even try to interject even more but even talking when you're saying previously i don't know what i want to do it's like bro if I'm gonna talk to somebody, literally your story is automatically gonna get more people who wanted to know like what really happened. Sure. You get them there, you make them laugh, and you talk about really recovery yeah. though. Yeah. In between the jokes. Yeah. Right. And I have a lot of funny stuff that happened to me in jail. Bro, that's yeah. what I was saying when I was talking to you, you need to do your own <laughs> pod, bro. Cause I know you have more and more stories to do, man. Yeah, I know you I have mean, more and more stuff. So in your due time, I have when a you're feeling ready, man. that if me and you got to chatting, we, we wouldn't we could stop. shoot, we could shoot fifty you know? episodes in a in a month. Fitz is like, I have a, I have a dinner I'm like, appointment. I hope that month doesn't start. Yeah, like right now we're gonna just do it. Like, okay, so <laughs> keep it rolling. Okay, I'm Let's go back to ninety one. Don't, like, don't, don't worry, I know a good lift. Oh, um, hey, that was good. <laughs> Yo, so. Ayo. So I knew this man. I knew this man half an hour, right? <laughs> and. uh we were, we had a, you know, we hit it off, but things felt further kismet because we share the first, the same phone number, the same first three numbers of our oh, phone yeah. number. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. I didn't know he was going to broadcast. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't know I had to change mine, but. <laughs> what? You can't guess the other four. I like... know, but I put out the other um, four, four somewhere else. Somewhere oh, else got else. you. Okay. <laughs> My bad. We're going to edit. We're going to bleep that kidding. out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, and then I've been looking for someone no. like him, you know, for weeks now. Yeah. For, to I mean, do a, Sean's talk. been talking about this for a long time. Yeah. So, it's, right. so yeah. I meet him yeah. and I'm like, bro, I'm out of town. I'll, uh, when I get back in town, you know, next week, we'll link up. We're both like, Facts. yeah, cool. 20 minutes later, I'm calling him up. I go, Big Cali, I left my wallet at home. I need a ride back to the valley. <laughs> He's like, I just picked up my next fare, bro, or I got you. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, sorry to ask, but. Yeah. Uh, Favor out the gate, <laughs> and out of an hour, I loved it. I was like, I, I fuck with him. Drop this is my kind of guy. Drop this is my kind of guy already. Out the gate, this is some shit I would do. Jordan, like Jordan knows, I would do that. Uh, hey, it was great meeting you. By the way, I want to pick your brain about something real quick, uh, real fast. Well, I was like, well, we're family, bro. I'm, nah, I'm gonna know sure. real soon. So anyway. Nah, man. But anyway, yeah, I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, do yeah. something in the future, man. Awesome. This yeah, was. Bro. I don't believe in coincidences, and your story is so powerful. I believe in it. I will, cause. Your story, it helps even people like me. Because it's like, bro, he could do it, I can do it. Because you're a human like I'm a human. And your story helps me too, man. Like Fact. watching your your hustle, like it's very inspiring. And Thank you, man. Thank you, And bro. so it's, you know, it's mutually... It's I appreciate that, man. Cool. Where, um, before we get about it here, man, what can people... I want to... You guys could talk about what you guys have going on on the road, what, you, what your message, or even some things in the future. Or where can people see your stuff? You know, this is your time to plug. I'm just developing my Instagram, which is just at and, and it's popping. By the way, I'm just starting it's to like popping. Put stuff on he's gonna here. be humble, like oh, it's just starting. No, shit's and, uh, cracking. It's funny. Hella videos, hella I, TikToks. Go follow him right now. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you can keep track. Like if I have comedy dates, if I come out to your town, please come out and support and say hello. That would be nice. Yeah. And what about you? Um, where you want to start? <laughs> well, we're going, we're going to be in New Jersey next month. That's right. I was going to start with that. Rewind, yeah, so. we'll be in Atlantic City, uh, June 24th through the 27th, right? 24, 25, 26. Yeah, uh, in Atlantic City at the Showboat Hotel. 
Yeah, for Classic it's Rewind, good. it's a crazy lineup. I'll be there signing autographs, so will Sean. That's tight. It's like some very iconic people. We're excited about that. Zach, bro, from Save Five. Yeah, Bible's Mark be Paul there. Gossler will be there. That's who I, I want to slap. Bible. Tara Reed. That's who I want to slap. Yeah, for sure. yeah <laughs> they have some crazy Will guests. Smith will just what? slap five with. I'm sorry. They have. They have. <laughs> sorry. Oh, no, not slap. See, you see, <laughs> now that he did that, you got to be real clear with what be you say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, yeah, we'll be there. And then, um, yeah, my Instagram could always use a little hello. Shout it out. Shout too. it out. It's Where can people get At me? Natanya Ross, N A T A N Y A, Ross, like the store. Love it. All one word. Um, yeah, I'm writing a book. Uh, and you have a group, and you do um, a, it was an abbreviation, it was an acronym, and I saw it on your thing, and I wanted to ask you about it. It oh, was um, What? Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Please talk about that. I do a lot of podcasts. Nobody asked me about that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the vice president of the Women's Association of Addiction Treatment. That's big. I've held that board position for almost two years now. Congratulations. Um, So, yeah, it's uh, that's been a great honor for me to do. And what are some some, what are some things we could do to make it a little more exciting for you? Um, For what? Yeah, because you said it's you're it's in a you're in a board position. He's good. And then that Sean was and I, a that was a come on, that was bro. A, that was yeah. He went he, with it. He, he doesn't, doesn't get yeah, it. Like it doesn't. Yeah. I didn't catch it because I'm really into. I'm like okay, okay. He's <laughs> like, then like once I did he's catch like, Let it, me get I was like, in really quick. I yeah. have this one last I one of the world. As sometimes. soon as I got it, I it, it no, wasn't. it was very Larry David like. Oh, yeah, okay. I didn't find okay. it funny to be honest. So yeah, I, it's not funny. I, if get I, him. If, you know, get him. He, he can't always get a laugh. Yeah, Chris Ro- let me get a couple of laughs Lord around knows. here. Will Smith from right now. It's okay, yeah, right? No, <laughs> right I would now, never. it's okay. And then also too, I mean, I would love to mention real quick. Um, I think that stage is like in my eye. You like Sorry. staged me out the game here. And it's this candle literally to the right of you that, is that what I it wanted is? to move it, but That's I was right. talking. That's right. So Sean and I. Both also volunteer for so a couple of things. So for a nonprofit organization in the San Fernando Valley called Hope of the Valley, I got really involved with them during the pandemic and I helped fundraise money to um, sponsor tiny homes to get homeless people off the street and into the shelter of a tiny home. Wow. Um, I founded an organization 10 years ago called San Fernando Valley Feed the Homeless. Wow. It's a nonprofit organization where currently what we do is we come downtown and all of these different places that have like a very interesting place in my heart. I was going to say you're going back yeah. to where you were and, and like giving back to those give, communities. You know, in my organization, we're more about like providing a meal and some hope to people on the street and just kind of spreading the message of kindness. Can people but, donate to these organizations? Um, yes. Yeah. So like that? for Hope of the Valley, actually right now, a part of the proceeds for Sean's merch is going directly back to Hope of the hey, what's Valley. What's the merch right here? Is this what it is right here? No, I got some dope hoodies, bro. I got some. Yeah. I'm, so so it's it's impossible, but I moved the the uh, uh, apostrophe over, so it's impossible. You love know? it. Yeah. Love it. And, so uh, and that's a, you can find that link in the bio on his website too, and that's a you. great way to donate. Okay. And we're. I gonna- used to be one of the people that depended on this rescue mission. Wow. So I used to pop off over there for supplies and toiletries yeah. and to get a shower and to get a meal. Wow. So, and I've spent uh, many Thanksgivings in line at uh, the Mission right here in downtown yeah. L.A. Just kind of like in a line with a lot of different homeless people waiting just to get like an apple, a bologna sandwich, a little box of apple juice Stop. and a pair of socks. Just kind of waking up, looking around like what the fuck happened? Like, how did I get here? Mm -hmm. You know, so when I talk about like having a heart of based in service, I think that um, it's so important to give back when and where you can. And some people would rather just give money Mm -hmm. and we need those people too. And some people would rather get in the trenches with it and like show up at the tiny home communities and do like kind of community outreach in that way too. So yeah, that organization is just, it doesn't matter what just, avenue you take, as long as, as you long do as it. As long as you're, like I you said, that. all roads lead back to. Yeah, all you, roads you, lead to. You can to get it. to LA a million different ways, and however you want to get there is is just as beautiful as you know. We don't have a shit ton of money. We can't give this place a hundred grand, although we I'm sure we would love to if we could. Mm-hmm. But what we can do is use our platforms to help fundraise for them. So that's Facts. I believe it's Facts. just www.hopeofthevalley.org. Nice. And even if you uh, don't have funds to to donate, mm-hmm. which like, 
I mean, also common misconception. I live paycheck to paycheck. People see my Instagram and think because I'm a former actor and all of this, that I have this like life that is popping financially and it is not. Like I struggle, you know? Mm -hmm. So sometimes I will the just clean, real, man. I'll clean out my closet. They'll come right to your door, pick up the donation bags of clothes. And that goes so far to a person that's coming off the streets into the shelter of a tiny home. They might not even have an entire outfit. To and now their they name. got Gucci slides. And now they got well. <laughs> 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 nice. I mean, I'm a philanthropist, but I, love <laughs> it. I kept the Gucci I love slides it. for me. I love but it. But they might have a nice pair of Adidas ones. Yeah, yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Why not? So, and so there's so many awesome ways to give back. And Sean and I both will be promoting a lot of that kind of stuff on our that's social dope. medias as that's well. Dope. And um, yeah, I think that's you know probably that's the dope. most important thing I can plug. I could sit here and tell you about all my dumb TikToks that I make and my fucking <laughs> autograph signings and the book First I'm off, writing, but... You're writing a book? I am. All right, I'm... Okay. I'm writing it. We gotta I'm have you come back on. Done. We gotta it's, have you come back on when, you, when the I'd book is honored. done. Yeah, yeah, it's almost done. Um, and, you know, it, we'll, we'll see. I, I, I think that I did the very best that I could being 100% authentic and, like, letting the reader see every part of who I am, including like the darkest pockets of my brain, wow. which are not easy to express and very uncomfortable to be vulnerable to that level. But if you're gonna do it, you gotta like, you gotta come correct, you know? I'm gonna say it right now, like I have no little snippets of this book and I'm calling it right now, Nep it's probably gonna be a Netflix series. It should be if, it, if it's not, it should be. Well, I hope that you can direct it, write yeah. it, produce it, star in it, something. Let's talk about it right let's here. Keep, we'll, we'll, it's keep, happening. let's keep it in the family if I we can. It. I love it. I love it. You know? Yeah. And you guys can come back and talk about it, man. Yeah. I, I look forward to it, yeah. man. Well, cool. I appreciate both of y'all for real coming on the podcast. Yeah. It's been a pleasure, man. Yeah, it's, it's been, been awesome. so many great gems, so much, like, I can't speak about it enough. And it means a lot to us, man, honestly. Like, I'm Ooh. not just saying that because you're in front of me. Like, I hope you understand your story is going to help a lot of people. I hope Because I know in just my life and, it's helped And uh, your whole team and your crew, everyone's real solid. Yeah, so. man. Shout out Productive Culture. Good group of people. You know what it is, man. Shout out Knockout Studios, by the way, too. Um, here, definitely. And, um, yeah, for where... Oh, you. we should just shout out. Oh, let me do my final thing. I was like, dang, sorry. I'm still thinking about everything else. Sorry, my fault. Um, for this podcast, go to BigCaliWorld.com. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, Big Cali World. We need subscribers. Also, for all your, your podcast needs, audio and visual, go to ProductiveCulture.com backslash podcast. In the How Did You Hear About Us section, put in Argon Radio, Big Cali World. Put Sean Weiss told me I want to do a podcast. We'll figure it out, all right? <laughs> Whatever you can think of, all right? Come through. You'll get a special discounted rate. Literally, he'll hook you up. Your your podcast will look great, sound better. And we got a location for you to shoot it here at Knockhouse also. So we're all in-house. We're doing it well. We're grinding. It is what it is, man. And um, I'm just happy, man. Honestly, I can't thank you enough, yeah, man. Too, I know. It's going to be great. Cool. Thank you, Sean, man. It's the man with the plan. I ain't Clark Campbell. Some ladies do call me Superman. It's your boy, Big Cali. Feeling good. Natani, thank you so much again. I appreciate you. Sean, thank Big you. Big Cali, yeah. bro, all the time. Extra lit, extra lit, extra lit. Cali world all the time, extra lit, extra lit, extra lit.